Hi, I'm Audrey. I'm going to kind of go over um, some of the innate and acquired immune system relations and responses. So we're going to start with the innate immune system and the scenario is a pathogen has successfully penetrated your peripheral tissue such as your skin or your mucous membranes. So the first thing that's really going to happen is pattern recognition receptors are going to detect pathogen associated molecular pad patterns, which I will call PAMPs from here on out. So uh, PAMPs are uh, ev evolutionarily conserved um, air like DNA within the microbial invaders. And uh, these receptors sort of um, at, can be a variety of different things, as you can see. So we have the toll-like receptors, which, which, and these are expressed as membrane-bound and cytoplasmic receptors, and they detect a large number of viral, bacterial, fungal, and parasitic PAMPs. So that, that's really good to kind of cover the whole range, and they facilitate the activation of the adaptive immune system, and they do that by pre producing pro-inflammatory cytokines. And then if we look at the C-type lectin receptors, you'll see that those are involved within fungal recognition, and those modulate the innate immune response by binding to carbohydrates, and those are membrane brown receptors. And then we have the FMET lube receptors, and those respond to bacteria specifically. Uh, FMET itself is used for the initiation of protein synthesis within bacterial species, so it's able to recognize and bind to that. And then we have nod-like receptors, and their main role is to, de is to detect cytoplasmic PAMPs, which often induce an immune inflammatory response complex known as the inflammasome. And then RIG-I receptors, uh, those sense double-stranded rRNA, which is a crucial step in viral replication. And then moving on, still in the innate immune response, we have uh, monocytes, which can be, which are basically macrophages and dendritic cells. Now a macrophage is, um, they're widely distributed throughout the body, and that's in order for them to um, phagocytize my microorganisms and foreign substances found within the bloodstream and tissues of, of the body. Uh, they have the ability to bind to and engulf those an an antigens, and they are often the first responders to invaders because they're floating around in the body. And because of that, they play a large role in the innate and adaptive immune response. Um, with the aid of uh, deg their like degradation enzymes and the lysosomal granules, uh, they're able to engulf invaders, and then they're able to break down the trapped materials and kind of recycle those substances for later use. So they break down the invaders into amino acids and sugars. And then they also ingest antigens and, pr and process them via partial digestion or denaturation. And then they present those antigen specific T cells and um, they connect them to the adaptive immune system overall, specifically, I believe the B cells. Um, dendritic cells are kind of like mag macrophages, um, but they're highly efficient in kind of collecting those antigen presenting cells and thus they are really critical to the innate and immune system responses as a whole. Uh, these can be found either stationary within the lymph nodes in the spleen or as kind of migration cells in the blood. Uh, plasmacytoid dendritic cells are unique and uh, those are PDCs. Um, those P PDCs are unique because they produce a large quantity of those alpha and beta interferons in response to viral and bacterial stimuli and then if we look at the natural killer cells, um, the feet, the, these kind of are found on, they're able to detect features on membranes of abnormal cells. So cells that are not um, of the host. So that'll be virus infected cells or cancer cells. And um, a natural killer cells are able to detect them and they're toxic to them. So they are cytotoxic and they hold a large granule lymphocyte and they are to toxically potent to the tar target cell. So what happens is the natural killer cell will make contact with this, the target cell and it can create a pore in the mem membrane of the target cell leading to its lysis. 
Other mo molecules can then uh, can also insert themselves into the target cell and create apoptosis. That is program cell death, and that happens by uh, fragmentation of the target cell's DNA. Um, not, 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 natural killer cells lack antigen-specific receptors, so they function via cell-to-cell -cell contact. And during that contact, they're able to detect the missing self-antigen on the target cell, and that is known as the killer cell inhibitory receptor. So without that killer cell inhibitory receptor, the, nat the natural killer cell will then be activated. Moving on, we have the adaptive immune system, kind of a brief overview of it. So we're going to start with B cells. Uh, B cells are initially activated after the bindings of antigens, and they secrete antibodies. So a B cell receptor is a membrane um, immunoglobulin mo mo molecule. Um, so it's an estimate of 100,000 B cell receptors will be expressed for every B cell. And once activated, the B cell will, will secrete the immunoglobulin um, to initiate a full antibody response. Antibodies with serum globulins are called immunoglobulins as a whole. And immunoglobulins have two key fe features. They can detect and bind to specific structures on an antigen, and they can perform common biological functions once connected that will lead to the antigen's death. So this connection can activate the complement system of the innate immune response, and that, of course, leads to lysis or phagocytosis of the target cell. Now, T cells require those APCs that we talk, talked about earlier. Um, those responses are not really antigen specific, but they release soluble mediators, kind of like cy 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 cytokines. Um, we have B cell helpers, these guys right here. Uh, those T cells work in tandem with, with the B cell in order to increase the production of antibodies. Um, that They do that by releasing cyto cytokines, which cause activation signals for the B cells that regulate the proliferation and, dif and dif dif differentiation of the B cells. And then helper T cells are really crit critical to the T cells as a whole. They have different functions based on the subset of cytokines, and they lead to various effects. If you have a D defect in your helper T cells, it can really uh, impact your adaptive immune system, kind of causing a lower response overall. And then we have the cytokines, and two ones I want to talk about are the inflammatory and the cytotoxic. We'll start with the inflammatory. Um, certain T cells release uh, those side cytokines that are then activated on the migration of monocytes and macrophages, and that leads to catalytic inflammatory responses. And then cytotoxic effects, uh, those are T cells that are killer cells um, so they will lead to death of their target target cell upon contact. They're kind of related to the natural killer cells. So overall, you're able to see that these complex systems found in the innate and adaptive immune systems build off of each other in order to learn from invaders and swiftly suppress and destroy them. Thank you.